Welcome to Model Steam Engines for Beginners, Part 36. Popular Model Steam Engine Thread Forms. I've done quite a bit about this over the years, but people are constantly asking me for the thread sizes for different applications. This is an old but unused 501 boiler from Stuart. This clip shows the hole in the boiler bush on top of the boiler. Yes, it looks a bit small to me, but I'm not going to drill it out because this bush connects to the superheater tube and I don't want to disturb it. In case you're wondering what the black line is on the boiler, in a previous video I drew on this boiler to show the place where the water gauge fits. Here are a pair of cast metal plates for a 501 boiler. Brand new, never touched. At the moment I have quite a good collection of Stuart boilers, so I thought I'd show you them. Entry level is the 500 boiler, and as you can see it has two long water tubes, but the centre tube is a superheater. Above those two are two 501 boilers, very similar, but they have more water tubes, and again the superheater pipe down the centre. The diameter of the barrel on a 500 and 501 boiler is the same but the diameter of the barrel on a 504 boiler is far larger. The 504 boiler has a superheater tube down the middle, but it has more water tubes at each side. The Stuart boiler fittings for the 500 and 501 boilers are the same. And in fact the fittings for the 504 boiler look the same, except the threads are larger, where the fittings screw into the boiler. Here are the thread sizes for a 500 and 501 boiler. The water gauge uses quarter by 32 threads per inch and the check valve bush is also threaded quarter by 32 threads per inch. Both the pressure gauge siphon and the steam tap adapter on the top of the boiler are threaded 3 16 by 40 threads per inch. I can't say that the thread is particularly tight, but some Loctite 542 will fix that. The other bush on the top of the boiler is of course for the safety valve, and here I'm fitting that. Once again the threads are not exactly tight, but I'm sure it'll be fine. You get the idea what the boiler is going to look like. I will of course be cleaning it up and polishing it to almost a mirror finish with a bit of luck. These are the old style water gauge fittings for a Stuart boiler, and they're really good. I wish they still made them with the inspection plugs in the end to clear any lime scale, which does happen periodically. But that's the price of progress, some things are just not as good as they used to be. Every workshop needs a lot of these. These are taps and dies, and this is my collection, or part of my collection that I've amassed over the years. Recently I've fitted a lot of them into die holders to speed the job up. I also have some ancillary equipment that I use with the taps and dies. These are tap wrenches, and this is an old and very rusty tailstock die holder and it's next to a tub of equally rusty old dies. I have a lot more taps and dies than this, and believe me, you do need a few. Here is a common ME type thread. ME stands for model engineering in this case, and this is a safety valve, and it has a half inch diameter thread. In this clip, I'm trying to find out what the thread is. So I'm very carefully trying to screw it into different dies, and so far it's not fitting in any of them. Luckily, ready to go in one of my die holders is the correct size die. This die is half inch by 26 threads per inch, a very common thread for locomotive type safety valves. This is what's called an express type safety valve, and it has a smaller thread on it. And to find the size of this, I'm applying the same technique. I'm just using a random collection of dies out of my box of dies until I find one that fits, but in this case, none of them fitted. And that's because I thought this was a 3 8 of an inch diameter thread, but it isn't, it's smaller than that. This is a 7 16 of an inch thread, and another way of finding out what the thread pitch is, is to hold it against the tap. As you can see, it perfectly matches this 7 16 tap. And in this clip, you can see the diameter and threads per inch marked on the die. So this one is 7 16 by 26 threads per inch. After a while, you learn to spot the thread forms just by looking at them. I can clearly see that the thread on this small safety valve is quarter by 40 threads per inch, and this is very common for quite a lot of union nuts and quite a lot of parts that are found in steam locomotives. And by holding this very fine thread against a slightly coarser tap, you can see that it's nowhere near. When I select the correct size tap, you can clearly see that the threads are the same. 
As I've just mentioned, quarter by 40 threads per inch is commonly used in steam locomotive parts, but sometimes the threads can be quarter by 32 threads per inch, as used by Stuart models, Cheddar models and others. This is a Stuart model steam tap of a Stuart 504 boiler, and this thread is 3 8 by 26 threads per inch. And the problem is with these small threads is sometimes the nuts screw onto the threaded part, but only so far, which generally means that the pitch is wrong. When I check the threads on this nut using a 26 threads per inch tap, everything's fine. So there's nothing wrong with the nut, it must be the other part on the valve. So I'm checking that with a 26 threads per inch die. And this die goes on the thread OK. It tightens up slightly as I rotate it, but that's because the thread is damaged. So by rotating it all the way, it's cleaning up the thread, and I would think that when I've done this, the nut should fit all right. So now the nut fits the thread on the steam valve perfectly. I notice that this valve has an adapter. This is not standard. And the thread is not 3 8 by 26 threads per inch because this 3 8 by 26 threads per inch nut only engages a couple of threads and then tightens up. This ended up being a 3 8 BSP thread, which is 28 threads per inch, as far as I can remember. So I thought I would write BSP on the valve so there can be no mistake when I come to fit this valve into a boiler. And BSP stands for British Standard Pipe. And this is called a 1 8 BSP thread, even though the thread diameter is 3 8 of an inch. With BSP threads, the 1 8 refers to the hole down the centre of the valve. It's very confusing. And some BSP threads are tapered, which makes it even more difficult to figure them out. You do find BSP threads on very old model steam engines and larger ones. But the most common threads that we use these days are just ME threads, model engineering threads. This thread's a bit peculiar, it's undersized. This thread is part of an old Stuart model safety valve, and it's definitely a little bit undersized. And the thread on Stuart model safety valves is generally speaking 5 16 by 26 threads per inch. So there is a bit of a pattern emerging here. Safety valves are often threaded using 26 threads per inch. But don't take it for granted, this is a 5 16 by 32 commercially available boiler bush, and if someone had built a boiler and used this for the safety valve, then it would be 32 threads per inch and not 26. Here's a small collection of very popular sizes of union nuts and union cones. As I mentioned at the beginning of this section, these are three very popular sizes. Quarter by 40, 5 16 by 32, and 3 8 by 32. And using the wonders of modern technology, I've written the sizes on the bench using a felt tip pen. And as you can see, a quarter by 40 threads per inch union nut will accommodate a 1 8 pipe or a 5 30 second pipe union cone. These cone sizes also fit quarter by 32 threads per inch nuts. And for the next pipe size up, which is 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe, the union cone for this fits in a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch union nut. And the next one up, quarter inch pipe. This fits into a quarter of an inch diameter union cone, which in turn would be held to the fitting using a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch union nut, or a 26 threads per inch union nut, or even maybe a BSP union nut. This is the lower part of a water gauge fitting. The very small union nut that you can see being held between my fingers is for a very small water gauge blowdown pipe, and this is threaded 3 16 by 40 threads per inch, the same as a pressure gauge. The other end of this fitting is a bit of a mess. What someone's done is re-threaded it quarter by 32 threads per inch when it was originally quarter by 40. Try not to do this because the resultant thread would be very weak. Here's another type of water gauge fitting. This one's 5 16 by 32. And here's a globe valve, quarter by 40. And another Stuart valve with an adapter fitted. But just look at the state of this one. You must never do this. It's a really easy option and it's a complete cop-out because the thread will fit either quarter by 32 or quarter by 40, but not very well and it's really bad practice. This is another early Stuart Models valve and once again, as usual, this is threaded 26 threads per inch. The original Stuart valves did not have a fitting that screwed into the boiler. The normal practice was to use a stainless steel adapter that screwed into the boiler and into the fitting, which was a good idea.
There's a lot more information about taps and dies on the internet. And if you want some more information generally, there is an e-book that I put together a few years ago, and that's available for my Patreon supporters to download for free. This is quite near the end of the video, and scrolling up the screen in Star Wars fashion is a list of very popular taps and die sizes. The golden rule for threading model engineering parts is not to apply too much pressure, and back off the tap frequently to clear the chippings. Also, don't forget to use tapping lubricants. Have a look at tapping lubricants that are different ones for different types of metal. But I generally use my steam oil rapeseed oil mixture, which seems to work very well for me. I get quite a lot of comments from viewers, but one thing that has caused me a problem is that viewers ask me questions without watching any of the other videos. So if I don't reply to your question, the answer really is watch some more videos. Please be aware that there are currently over a thousand videos covering many, many topics to do with model engineering. Originally, I started making the videos just to put something back. And the problem was, when I was a beginner, I found it very hard to get the correct information. But now, thanks to the internet, here is the information for everyone to see. And if you're a beginner to model engineering, you could do worse than what's the series called Model Engineering for Beginners. And this is part 19 of that series. Probably a good idea to watch the other 18 episodes as well. And that's about it for this video. From me, in a workshop far, far away, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.